Bernstein, we are back at the showboat here in Las Vegas. Let's pose the question of the night, our 900 number tonight. Mm. We want to know who you think is going to win this fight. It's coming up this Saturday. Evander Holyfield and Alex Stewart. You can let us know what you think by dialing 1-900-226-ES. Knockdown rule is in effect. There's no standing eight count here. Only the referee can stop a fight in Nevada. And uh, you can only be saved by the bell in the last round. Ten point scoring system. The winner of the round gets ten. The loser nine or less. And three judges will score the referee. You felt was going to win the fight between Holyfield and Stewart? I think they're telling wow. us, Al. <laughs> Maybe we prejudiced them at the beginning, saying we thought Holyfield might win, but not by this much. Oof. Overwhelmingly in favor of Evander Holyfield. You can still call 1-900-226-ESPN. Every 20th call, we'll get a poster of the Leonard Hearns saga of June 12th this year. So we come to our main event, Abe Gomez and Alfred Rangel. And this is one really that I think everybody around these parts has really been looking forward to. These are two, as we mentioned, hungry fighters, each of whom is capable of taking the other one out, Gomez and Rangel. What about the keys, Al? Well, for Gomez, he wants to get inside the Rangel jab. When he's there, go to the body. He's a superb body puncher. For Alfred Rangel, the good lateral movement and they're counter punching well. That's what he'll have to do against Gomez. Well, lest we forget, this is Halloween night, and when these two made their way into the ring, this is what we saw. This is Alfred Ooh. Rangel. I recognize him. It's, yeah, I, uh, looks a little bit like him. Doesn't mind looking like that now. It's in about an hour that he doesn't want to look like that. <laughs> this is true. No, he doesn't look like that. He's a good-looking young man, and there you see it as if uh, a miracle would happen. He is a very nice young man. In fact, both these athletes very confident. Nice. Here's Abe Gomez coming in. <laughs> Not to be outdone. He looks like, boy, he looks like something out of... Uh, um, Halloween 5 or something, doesn't he? <laughs> ah, yes, it is sport and it is showbiz. And speaking of showbiz, here's Michael Buffer. And ladies and gentlemen, before we get started with our featured bout of the evening, I would like to introduce three gentlemen behind me for the television cameras. First of all, former junior middleweight champion of the world, now a top middleweight contender, Matthew Hilton. And a silver medalist. The 1988 Olympic Games, now one of the top ranked fighters in his division, the flyweight division. Everybody's looking forward to seeing him fight for that title this spring. Let's hear it for him, Michael Carbajal. <laughs> and a two-time world champion, current WBA middleweight champion of the world, Mike McCallum. And there's a man here at ringside, ladies and gentlemen, that I know Mike McCallum would like to face right away, but he's going to have to wait till after December 7th, because on that night, December 7th of this year, this man will be fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. Ladies and gentlemen, a legend. Let's hear it for El Hombre. El Hombre con, um, ladies and gentlemen, Roberto Duran. The current WBC middleweight champion of the world, Roberto Duran. December 7th, ladies and gentlemen, Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran. Hands of, hands of stone. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the three judges for this next bout will be Art Laurie, Dave Moretti, and Dalby Shirley. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the featherweight division. The referee of this bout is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting. Out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks with red trim and weighs an even 126 pounds. He's from Pacoima, California, and brings an excellent professional record of 15 and 2, 8 KOs, ranked number 11 in the world by the IBF. Let's hear it for Abe Gomez. <laughs> and fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing the stars and stripes trim, he weighs an even 127 pounds. From San Antonio, Texas, as a professional, 17 victories, 10 by KO, against only six defeats, ladies and gentlemen, Alfred Rangel! Okay, Rangel, Gomez, you will already give instructions in your respective dressing rooms. Any question? Seconds come up, Fighter. 
So there's a look at Alfred Rangel. No bitterness, incidentally, on his part. No. He said, well, I did the best I could in that fight with Espinosa, and it just wasn't to be. He was very philosophical about it. Meanwhile, Abe Gomez coming off two very impressive performances, beating Duran and beating Franklin. That is Tony Duran <laughs> and not Roberto Duran, who incidentally looked pretty true. He looks like he's going better be getting crimped. Yes. The fight is in November, uh, de uh, December rather, and we're uh, at the end of October. Now this is a fight we've been talking about all day long, is really having all the potential for a very entertaining fight. Should be very good. So you see the knockout uh, ratio? That's about right. Gomez is about that much better a puncher than Rangel, although Rangel's people feel that he is actually stronger than Gomez. Gomez, the last couple times we've seen him anyway, has been a little bit slow getting out of the blocks. In fact, Duran had him on the canvas. And I repeat, that's Tony Duran. And Franklin, uh, Jeff Franklin, had a fairly good start against Dave Gomez. Once he gets going, though, he's tough. Now, they all say, I think it's interesting, you know, when a guy's a good boxer, everybody says he's a runner, you know. Well, Espinosa said that about Rangel. Yeah, Rangel was running so much, he kept hitting him while he was running. Rangel's not a runner. He's just a good mover and a great counterpuncher. And he's getting his jab on track right now. Yes, he is, and countering pretty well, too. See, and that's what he wants to do. Jab, jab, get out of there, and don't get hit by Abe Gomez. It's a real stepping stone fight for both these fighters, too. In fact, it's almost a shame that they have to fight each other, to tell you the truth. Very, very, yeah, it's true. And they're both good young men, uh, kind of, you know, at a crossroads. I hate to use that phrase, but, it, but it's true in this instance. And a win could easily get uh, the winner a, uh, a world title shot, maybe against the winner, the Jorge Paez, defending his title against Lupe Gutierrez. And they're both looking at that fight. Each said he'll be at that fight if he wins this one. First round taking on all the earmarks of what we think this fight will be to an extent, although a little more cautious. Rangel using the jab and boxing a little bit. Gomez, when he is getting close, trying to throw combinations to the body. Both fighters doing exactly what they told us they would when we spoke with them this morning. Excellent jab by Rangel. Yeah, right hand behind that jab. Good first round for Rangel. Yes, good hook by Gomez. So there you see, it, it really is true. They're both they're trying to execute their game plan. If Rangel can keep Abe Gomez at this distance, the whole fight, uh, I want to say he'll win, but I thought he won the last one. So he should win, or at least in my mind, should. Very nice and very effective jab by Rangel. Crisp jab. Gomez still gets his left hand in. Maybe jabs don't count. <laughs> yes. See, that's what the problem was in me looking at that last one. Well, we come to the end of the first round, and a quick right hand to it, hand rather to end that round by Rangel. In with it, and well, it landed. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but have a little faith in me, America. That left hook did land. Interestingly enough, when we talked with this man, Alfred Rangel, he said he felt that Gomez was actually a little bit quicker than he was. Rare that a boxer will acknowledge something like that it was interesting and yes Abe Gomez is quick certainly quicker than Espinosa who uh, Rangel last fought Fights uh, profile of mm. jabs in the first round as you can see Rangel really getting the job done and that figures you would expect the jab edge to go to Rangel Gomez would almost concede that if he could get inside and land those hooks to the body in the head The tenor of this fight right now, precisely what Alfred Rangel wanted. Carlos Padilla warns Rangel for holding. Oh. Rangel with not in him that imposing a record, 17 and 6. Um, was knocked out even by Mike Zena back in 1987, but he is a very improved fighter at the age of 22. He turned pro very early and uh, probably, in truth, wasn't ready to fight the kind of competition he's been fighting. But now he is. Gomez made an observation when we chatted. That he said that he'll feel my power in the first round, and if he didn't run in the first round, he will in the second. But I don't see that happening right now. There's no running going on. There's boxing going on. And there's jabbing going on. And most of it is by Rangel, and most of it is, la is landing. This is the fight that Gomez wants. He wants a street brawl if he can get it. I don't think he'll get it. 
Not if Alfred Rangel can help it. Rangel tying Gomez up on the inside. Very important for him to do that. And Abe wants to work. Now he's got Abe Gomez has the right referee in Carlos Padilla. Padilla very seldom will break fighters. He will just slap their gloves and, until uh, they fight their way out. So Rangel doing the holding won't get broken too often. See, look, Padilla just pulls their glove down. Tell you what, though, Rangel isn't doing that badly on the inside. Put it up. Are you okay? Put it up. That one hit right around uh, New Mexico, I think. Yes, I believe that's right. <laughs> around the... Or maybe Texas. On the I, fifth sure. stripe. Yeah. <laughs> Geography was never my best subject, so I'm not sure. Right hand by Rangel just stopped Gomez. I think if you were to poll all the media and the people here, a slight edge would have been given to, well, by golly, as I speak, you hand it to me. You're always prepared. <laughs> 17 members of Press Row picked Gomez. Four picked Rangel. And Gomez is the favorite. Minus 220 and Rangel is plus 180, whatever that means. I've never known what that no, meant. I don't either. Come to the end. He gave him confidence, and he knew that it, uh, there's not too many guys tougher in that division in Espinosa. Look at Rangel's jabs. 51 of 89 through two rounds. And, hey, the right hand ain't too bad either, folks. That's the right hand that, as you said, just stopped Gomez. Rangel's not a terrific puncher, but he, he's a sharp puncher. He said that he would like to fight this fight exactly the way he fought the fight with Espinosa. With different results, I'm sure. He is doing just that. And even though, oh, good uppercut by Rangel. Even though Abe Gomez is a little quicker on his feet than Espinosa, though I don't think he has the power of Louis, uh, Abe is having a tough time dealing with the hand speed of punching of Rangel. Good hook on the inside by Gomez. And remember, this is about the time in place when Abe Gomez really starts to pick up the pace, and he is cornering Rangel. So, while Rangel has done well over the first two rounds, that doesn't mean Gomez isn't going to come back. However, I have Rangel ahead, 28-18. Having won the first two rounds. But you're right, Gomez has been, if not a late starter, maybe a slow starter might be the better way to put it. Rangel still doing a pretty good job there, just kind of keeping Excellent. Gomez off balance. The counterpunching of Alfred Rangel is good, and Gomez himself is a good counterpuncher, but Rangel is just picking him apart here. Well, at 22 years old, Rangel has been fighting since 1984, so he had an early start as a pro, and you can see it. You can see what a, what a veteran he looks like in the ring. A bit of reddening on the face of Gomez. Again, Rangel doing a very good job, even inside. Yes, and Gomez is getting hit with so much coming in that he is not able to get in position to throw the body shots. Remember he told us today, good right by Rangel. If Gomez said a key to this fight for me was body work, how much body work has he done in this bout so far? Very little. Very little, it's because Rangel just hasn't allowed him to do so. Don't you like when I ask my questions and answer them at the same time? Yeah, that's right, so the question man and the answer man. That's kind of like being a contestant and a host on Jeopardy. Same time. So if we want a knockdown, you should finish your story about your friend who had the baseball card Yeah, that's card right. Collection. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> it was a valuable collection, no? Yes, it's actually, I'm going to say this real fast because yeah. I know somebody's going to get knocked out. Dwight Chapin is called, he's a writer for the San Francisco oh. Examiner, and he told me his baseball card collection is actually more valuable than his house. Wow. They, they, there are some like that. The jabs of Rangel. I mean, they're not punishing punches, but most of them are landing. And then he goes downstairs with the left hook. And one of the reasons I wanted to give that figure of how many people had picked Gomez, that's not unreasonable to pick Gomez. He was his slight favorite, and yet you look at Alfred Rangel boxing so well against him. Blood from the nose of Gomez now. Wonderful oh. by Rangel. Just fighting a very intelligent fight so far. 
And it's not that Gomez is doing anything particularly wrong. It's just that Rangel is forcing Gomez to fight his fight. Okay. Vaya a la toalla. I don't think that Abe Gomez felt that Rangel would be able to box him like this. But you know, what Rangel said was, Jeff Franklin fought his fight. He fought on the inside with Gomez. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to box him. I'm going to do what is best for me. And uh, a graphic demonstration of him doing just that. There's the jab. And he doubles with it, he triples with it, and look what it does. It sets up the right hand. And the counter punching, is it there? Yes, sir, Reed Bobby. Good right hand and a left underneath. And look at the defensive skills of Rangel. So that man, Abe Gomez, is now a little frustrated. I think trying to figure out a way offensively to get on track. Well, the most basic of all adages in the sport of boxing, hit and don't get hit, is exactly the way Rangel is fighting this fight so far. You know, for, for Abe, the key is he knows he's got to land that left hook. He's just got to get himself in position to throw it. And with all this, you, should, you have to point out that Gomez is probably the stronger of the two. So if he can wear Rangel down and if he can get inside the little headbutt there, he could still cause some problems for Rangel. And Gomez being a little busier than Rangel, but gee, look at the difference in percentage of effectiveness. Rangel is very sharp and very oh. accurate with his punches. That was the pattern of the Espinosa fight. Louis throwing a little more punches, but Rangel so accurate. We have those numbers actually given to us by the punch profile people, and Rangel threw 480 punches against Espinosa to 570 by Espinosa. But look at the numbers of effectiveness. Landed 51%, 243, while Espinosa landed only 25%, 145 punches. That, according as we said to our punch profile people. So it's interesting. Espinosa throwing almost 100 more punches, but Rangel landing 100 more punches. That's been the story of this fight, too. Good body work. Big Go right hand. Go. Set the right hand up, as you mentioned, with the body. And again, a right to the head and a left to the head. How ironic that Rangel should set that big punch up with a body shot when we're talking about Gomez's body work. Very nice work by Alfred Rangel. He just looks very sharp. And right at the moment, he looks like he could be as good as there is today in this division. He definitely, the fact that he fought so well against Espinosa gives you an indication that, yes, he can fight with the top featherweights. There's no doubt about that. Excellent body work now. And the uppercut. Gomez hurt, I think. Yes, he is hurt. And, and Rangel, not the kind of guy that's going to go in and be wild. This might be a case where more aggression might be called for, but he's not that kind of fighter. He's a boxer. He's a technician in the ring. You can see Abe Gomez breathing through his mouth and taking a lot of punishment right now. Quite a bit. I'll tell you what. Abe Gomez is in lots of trouble in this round. Yes, I mean, he is. Worse than it appears, which is the point you're making. And what an arsenal of punches Rangel has shown us. Uppercuts, body shots. There's the uppercut again. And Gomez fighting as a lefty now. Seeing if that can help him. Your point is well taken, too, that Rangel is just not being careless. Not wasting anything. And still getting the job done. A right hand there and a left behind him. Huge round for Rangel. Now, do you make that a 10-8 round? Well, I'm going to make it a 10-9 because I generally do not make two-point rounds when there's not a knockdown. However, you can make the case for that, to be sure. Here's the body punch by Rangel. Oh, an excellent shot underneath. Stops Gomez, and then the right hand stuns him. And another right. That second right is the one that in, in, in slow motion you can really see. The combination is flowing from Rangel. Three-punch combination. The beautiful part of that was the way he finished with the left hook. That's the thing I think that you really have to be impressed with. Abe Gomez right now trying to figure out this mystery in front of him. 
He is fighting too far away from Rangel. He really needs to get inside, but even on the inside, he has not fared that well. And the jab of Rangel has been an effective enough weapon that he's just not allowing Gomez to get inside and fight his fight. Here are the numbers oh in the fourth round. Look at this. Gomez, only 49 punches. Now, you compare that to Gomez's victory over Jeff Franklin. He averaged 92 punches a round. And look at here, 49 and only landed nine of them. And to elaborate a little bit more on that, Gomez finished the ninth and tenth rounds against Franklin by throwing 102 punches in the ninth round and 90 punches in the tenth round. So he is a, normally a busy fighter. Well, you know what? Uh, you know those college coaches you deal with every week that say, boy, those other guys, they got the greatest defense, the greatest offense, a great kicking game. I don't know how he can hang with them. Then they win by 40 points. That's maybe what Alfred Rangel was doing today when he said, oh, Gomez is a lot quicker than me. That's uh, right. I don't know. Certainly not tonight. Quick left hand again. There's no question Rangel's getting his punches off quicker and with more authority. And the Rangel jab, you know, has been the major foundation so far of what has been a superb performance by him, it's making everything else possible. And right now, Abe Gomez really respects the power of Rangel as well. He should. He can't walk in. I think he was hurt in the last round, too, and he may be just trying to take a little bit of a blow here and yeah. just suck it up for the end of the fight because he's going to need it. We're close to the halfway point. So far, it has been all Alfred Rangel. Okay, oh. uh, do you think anybody so far could have scored a round for uh, Abe Gomez? I, you know, I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm asking that because I'm curious. No, I really don't see any way, but... You know, there again, you hate to hearken back to the last fight and belabor the point, but the fight with Espinosa, we had, not only did we have Rangel winning it, but we had him winning it by a lopsided four margin. Four or five points, and some judges had it as much as four the other way. Well, we'll see. Don't want to go looking for trouble here. Yeah, that's right. Especially not on Halloween. I mean, they put a curse on you. <laughs> that's right. I don't need another one. <laughs> oh, there have been previous ones? <laughs> Well, the fifth round, not as perfect for Rangel as the fourth, but he still had an excellent fifth round. There with an uppercut. Gomez is being patient. I will say that about him, if he's got anything left in a tank. So we come to the end of round number five, and that one a little bit closer than the others. Vander Holyfield is going to beat Alex Stewart. You can still call O and register your thinking on who you think is going to win this Heavyweight fight, 1-900-226-ESPN. Alfred Rangel throwing good combinations in the last round, and uh, we may have a record here. Uh, Abe Gomez landed only four punches in round five. That's got to be close to the record for fewest punches landed in the full round. Yeah, and we were saying that that yeah. was a little bit better round for him. Yeah. Shows what we know. That's right. <laughs> Gomez now trying to pick the pace up and force the fight here, but being a little bit wild as he does so. And on your card. Hey, Dave Stewart might as well be pitching this one. Shut, Shut up, up. 50 to 45. Just about a perfect game, too. Yeah. And to <laughs> take that one step further, for Gomez, it was no hits. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. You know, they said that Rangel had been sparring with a lightweight, uh, Rocky Balboa, who's a pretty good lightweight down in their area. And um, not the Rocky Balboa, no, of course. Of course. Um, but uh, they felt that would help him, sparring with a strong, bigger, stronger guy, and maybe it has. He does look quick. And having no trouble with Gomez on the inside. And Abe very forthright with us today, saying, I can't, I don't want to lose because I don't have to climb the ladder again. Yeah, these are two, and we always talk about this, but these are two very nice guys. Oh, yeah. You really do hate to see either man lose. They're they're dedicated to box, to their craft. They're decent young men. They have good people behind them. Rangel with another good left hand a moment ago, and that came behind a combination just before that. Even 
when Gomez does get Rangel in close quarters, which ostensibly is Gomez, despite Rangel, still gets the better of it. Yeah, and that's the... It, so often it's interesting when that happens. You know what a fight plan is supposed to be for each guy, and you, you think you know what each man's strengths are, and it turns out not to be the case. And that's what those people at Press Row that all picked Gomez felt, you know, that he could do that. Alfred Rangel right now surprising them, though not a radical surprise. It figured to be a pretty even fight. But it isn't. It's no. Rangel dominated. And just doing a great job, taking that step back and just waiting that half second for Gomez to take a step in, and it's combinations of punches at all times. Never just one punch. And everything off the jab. Abe Gomez just having a very tough time. Look at how far back he is. So he's getting hit with everything. And then even when he is on the inside, one good body punch, and that's it. And Rangel throws a whole bunch of punches. Coming down to the end of the sixth round. And another frustrating round for Abe Gomez. And he's got to be thinking, what do I have to do? And I don't know that there's an answer. Right now, there doesn't appear to be one. End of round number six, Gomez running out of minutes. Remember the keys to victory. Well, so far, uh, Abe Gomez has not been able to get inside that often. And even when he does, he's not being effective. He's not been able to go to the body very well. For Rangel, lateral movement, but not that much. He hasn't needed that much. And the counter punching, oh boy, has it been good. And the thing I could have added in there was fight well in the inside when Gomez does get there, and he's certainly done that. And a very impressive performance so far by the man on the right of your screen. Gomez coming in, and what does he get? The left uppercut. Good arsenal of punches from Alfred Rangel. He is not a one-dimensional fighter. That's what people would lead you to believe. That, oh, he's a jab, jab, straight right hand kind of guy. No, he can go to the body with the hook. He can throw the uppercut on the inside. And the other thing is, he's not getting hit. Yeah, and that's a real good thing. So Abe Gomez trying to solve a pretty tough riddle tonight. I would not have anticipated Gomez having this much trouble hitting Rangel. Uh, Alfred was, was excellent against Espinosa and did a good defensive job, but I thought Gomez with his additional hand speed and better movement might be able to get to him a little bit more. It's just that Rangel keeps getting off first and it is oh. the jab, that's the story. Look at that percentage. Yeah. I mean, and the accuracy with which Rangel is throwing the jab is what's really impressive. He, you expect him to land more than Gomez, but not that many more. Good work. Look at that. On the inside, Rangel is, is doing that work. Rangel really well prepared for this fight against Gomez. Obviously, it, fighters always talk about the fact they don't like to look at tapes of an opponent, but yet the way Rangel's fighting him, you have an idea that if he didn't look at him, somebody did. He's doing all the right things against Abe Gomez. And uh, you said it earlier, you look at Alfred Rangel, and you know he's fighting a tough guy who just beat a contender in Jeff Franklin. We know he did well against Espinosa. You say to yourself, Forget the six losses. This is a top featherweight, a man who is in the top ten for sure or should be among the featherweights in the world. And Espinosa's off fighting Maurice Stecca for the WBO title, a new entry into boxing. Um, and you have to think to yourself, uh, if there's justice in this world, uh, Alfred Rangel ought to get the first shot against whoever wins that title. You would really think so. And again, looking at the styles of some of the other champions, Paya is to be one. He fights a style that's not unlike that of Gomez. Mm -hmm. Certainly uh, probably stronger, but Alfred Rangel has the certain kinds of skills that might give Jorge Paez a little bit of trouble. Well, in the first fight, Calvin Grove gave him trouble until the final right. round. You did that fight I down did. in Mexicali, yes. and he was winning it. Yes, he Grove. was. Yeah, in fact, Paez had a 10-6 round in the last round to win that fight, and he needed it. Yeah. Now, Paez has improved since then, yes. but nevertheless, this kind of style does trouble him. Look at Rangel on the inside. And I think Rangel's probably a little stronger than Calvin Grove. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think better conditions as well. 
And his trunks are snappier. They are. Better dresser. <laughs> Clothes make the but man. You know. I like Calvin, though. He's a good fighter. Well, it's pretty much more of same here in round number seven as we head for the end of this one. And again, Abe Gomez running out of time. To me by Logan Hobson and a punch profile. Only eight jabs, I think, in the last round by Rangel. He's throwing a lot more hooks and, and uppercuts, as we saw evidence in that replay, okay, so that replay apropos of what is becoming a little trend for Rangel. Still doing quite well, but not needing the jab as much. And on your card? My card, a shutout for Alfred Rangel. I can't think of a round that I would have given a Gomez. Oh. Not even one, not, certainly not one of the earlier ones, and none at this juncture. Gomez starting to get a little bit frustrated. And every time he does charge in, he pays the price. Not with big punches, but just enough to keep you off balance. Remember back to that fourth round when Abe Gomez really was hurt by Rangel. And Alfred Rangel took his time, might have been guilty of not jumping on the opportunity, not seizing it. But nevertheless, he didn't want to do anything foolish. He knows Gomez is a big puncher. Right now, he's carving out a win, we think, and uh, doing it very convincingly. Well, however Gomez tries to fight him, Rangel is winning the battle, whether it's inside or outside. There is the good body work by Gomez coming here in the eighth round. It's pretty late. Well, we saw Matthew Hilton against Tim Williams, although he was behind, uh, ended up to be ahead on the cards, but he certainly thought he needed a knockout to win, got it in the tenth round. So Abe Gomez still has that puncher's chance. It's not unprecedented with Gomez either. He is, as we mentioned, a much better finisher than he is starter. And that Hilton uh, knockout, one of many highlights we're going to be looking back on at our, on our year-end show that's going to be airing, I guess, sometime in December. Yeah, we're we'll looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. We used to do those all the time here on ESPN, and uh, now this year we, we're getting back to it, the year-end wrap-up. And again, as you can see, Gomez hitting Rangel on the arms, on yeah. the gloves, everywhere except where he needs to. Wonderful defense by Alfred Rangel. And that shot, oh, gives you a perfect vantage point oh. to see the good work by Rangel on the inside. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see the numbers in that round because Gomez did not appear to be effective. Hey. Hey. Don't worry about the hand. Just go, just go what you got. You got one hand, you go one hand. Okay? okay. Power left hand. Power left hand, body, and head. Okay? <laughs> just put your right hand out there. Just just to cover and left foot. Okay. Okay. Use the right hand, but no le pongas power. Don't put any power. Just take care of it. But you gotta use it, baby. Come on. Look at this. Wow. I mean, same number thrown and look at the edge by Alfred Rangel. And I'm, I'm inclined to agree with that. You know, we're not sitting here counting, so it's hard to know. You know, it's hard to know how much you agree or don't agree. But I'll tell you, you look at that, and um, I'd have a hard time faulting that at all. Yeah, that's exactly the way the fight has gone, as a yeah. matter of fact. And it's obvious, I think, to any of the 1,500 or so people here at the showboat. Now is it obvious to the three people with pencils in their hands? I didn't want to say that. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless. Well, I'm sure, you know, Alfred Rangel, you know, they're only human. They got to be, Rich Lander and his people in his corner have got to be a little paranoid. They Absolutely. They got to be sitting there thinking, well, we did this once before. We've been here. It's deja vu. Let's hope that the ending isn't deja vu. One ringside observer just popped by here, our table in between, and uh, wrote down score, question mark, and I quickly wrote down shutout. And um, I'm wondering if that person is wondering if 
this is a close fight. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, right now, it, from our vantage point and from the punch profile vantage point, uh, it certainly looks like Alfred Rangel is just dominating and doing it in a very methodical, workmanlike fashion. This young 22-year-old from San Antonio uh, is always in superb condition, at least when we've seen him. And uh, he's a skilled boxer. And for Abe Gomez, it's really frustrating because it's been Rangel's fight from the beginning. And the things that Abe thought he could do well here, he has not been able to do. Yeah, that, again, it's been, in our opinion, at least such a complete victory. Mouthpiece of Rangel popped out there. Such a complete victory, and I'll use victory in quotes, in that he's won the defensive side of the fight, yeah. the offensive side of the fight. He's won the outside fight. He's won the inside fight. And that's a surprise, because really, this didn't figure to be one-sided for either man. And if it was going to be one-sided, I think you would have you would have gotten most of the people to say it was going to be one-sided for Abe Gomez. But Alfred Rangel uh, showing again what he did against Espinosa. And as you see, even when Gomez lunges in, he catches Rangel on the arms or on the gloves. 18% effectiveness in the last round for Gomez. We just spoke about that a little bit. Abe is doing some body work on the inside, but it just isn't the kind that's effective. Look there, he misses with the left hook, catches the left hook in return from Rangel. And you know, his, his cornerman, Rangel's cornerman, said to us, we think Alfred's stronger on the inside, and so far it has been true. Not the conventional thinking going into this ball. Rangel fighting without a mouthpiece and fighting exactly the same way he did before. Just controlling the fight. Gomez got a left hand in there. Abe now a left hander and a uh, sign of frustration. Coming to the end of the ninth round, three minutes of boxing left for this man and more importantly for this man. He's going to have to find something. Those counter shots. Good hand speed at the inside by Rangel. All those punches landed. Shut out. Total. I, I, I can't think of a round I would give to Abe Gomez. Cannot think of one. And this one's starting out exactly the same way. And again, you can't emphasize enough, it's not only that Gomez isn't able to get to Rangel, it's that when he does get inside, Rangel gets the best of it. Look at that. Landing a lot of punches. I mean landing a lot of punches. And I don't care. People could tell me those aren't hard punches. I don't care if they're hard. They're legal and they're landing. And crisp. Crisp. Not hard. And that means he's winning. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not just relating this to the uh, to the Rangel fight of pass. So we're not relating that. Straight right hand hurt Gomez. That one was hard, I'll tell you. Well, the big upset here, as we've said throughout, is that it's been such a one-sided fight and uh, not as thrilling as we thought it might be. It's been a, you know, from Alfred Rangel's standpoint, it's been a performance that he would dream about. Oh, put it in a time capsule. Yeah, I mean, he, he would never want to fight a different fight than this in his life other than maybe to knock him out in that fourth round when he when he had the opportunity. But Abe Gomez is a pretty tough character anyway, so it's not just Rangel that couldn't create a knockout. But Abe... If this does turn out, indeed turn out to be a loss, as it would appear, it's going to be a tough blow for him, but not irreversible. Because he's had two excellent performances. He's, he's only had two other losses in his pro career. And he's become very popular here in Las Vegas. He fought all his fights in California before he came here. And since he's been here, made a lot of friends here. Made a lot of friends amongst the folks in ESPN land, too. Everywhere. I mean, he's an action fighter and will continue to make good bouts. He's having a hard time on the inside. You see Rangel able to tie him up, throw those counter shots, and Abe unable to get that left hook off. That's been the real big problem, and he hasn't been able to put himself in position to throw it. Maybe that's why he switches to lefty so much, trying to get that left hand off from the southpaw stance. Ten seconds left in this tenth and final round. And it's over. And I'll tell you, 
One man's opinion, this was a clinic for Alfred Rangel. As good a performance, they raise him up in what they anticipate to be victory. If it's anything but, then uh, somebody did cast a spell here on Halloween because that young man won this fight, and he did it in convincing fashion. Very impressive. He can't fight any better than this, I don't think, because he was in against a very tough guy, a guy who had just beaten a top 10 fighter who has got a very good record and who has lots and lots of skills. So uh, Alfred Rangel showed us tonight, yes, he's a top, should be a top 10 featherweight. Absolutely. And Rich Lander, you look at him, he's very happy. Well, there's a definite revenge factor. He took it a lot harder, I think, than his fighter when he lost to Louis Espinosa. Yeah, he really did. He really felt, uh, you know, cheated in that experience. I'm sure Rangel did also, but he was a little more stoic about it. Look at that. What an edge. And uh, right around 50% for Rangel, which is very good. And for Abe Gomez, you look at him, he's, he's taking, he's bearing up pretty well, but, you know, he knows this just was not his night. All right, let's get the word with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Dave Moretti scores the belt 99-91. Dolby Shirley scores it 99-90. And Patricia Jarman has it 99-92 for the winner by unanimous decision, Alfred Rangel. No injustice this time. Just was as, as it should be. And Alfred Rangel is the winner, and Abe Gomez will fight another day. We'll be back to talk with the winner. After Alfred this. Rangel is the winner over Abe Gomez, and he is with Al Bernstein. Al? Well, Alfred, this time, uh, no tears afterwards, although you didn't shed any before, uh, after the Espinosa fight. You took that loss very graciously, I thought. This time, you did exactly, I think, what you wanted to do and came away with the decision. Is there any part of this performance that was less than what you wanted? Uh, no, I, you know, I, I was, uh, before I came into the ring, I was thinking about just boxing him and I'm pointing him and uh, just don't let him get close to me. And uh, he, he, I'm surprised he didn't come after me like he came mm -hmm. to Franklin. I guess, you know, my jab was working. I was trying to use my, my, as many jabs as possible to keep him away. And uh, it, did, it worked pretty good. You know, I'm really happy with my performance. Did you think you might get him out in the fourth round? Yeah, I, I almost had him, but I, I hurt my right hand in, 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 the, in the third round. And, and when I, I stung him in the, in the, in the fourth round, I, I, it just, like, a, a, a strong pain came in my right hand, so I had to hold up, and I was trying, throwing, like, slappy, just slaps, you know, with my with my, my, my right hand, because it really hurt it, and, uh, you know, I almost had him, but, uh, you know, I just let him, <laughs> you know, I just, I just right. didn't go after him. Well, the right hand being hurt certainly yeah. had a bad impact. Congratulations to you, Alfred. Good win. Thank you very much. I just want to say hi to my wife, Isabel, and my, mo my son, Moses, and my daughter, Lori. All right, they got to be happy down in San Antonio this time. They think that they got justice, ladies and gentlemen. They did for Alfred Rangel. Superb performance.